Hi, I'm Erica Reed with EricaReedLovesKids.com. Today we have Dr. Debbie, who is an incredible neurologist and also a mom. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Erica. Tell us, Dr. Debbie, what exactly is a neurologist? A neurologist is someone who takes care of problems related to the brain, the spinal cord, or the nerves. First, let's discuss technology and our children playing video games and, you know, seizures that can come from playing these games. What happens as a neurologist and you dealing with the brain when our children are playing these video games or seeing certain movies and they pick up certain images that cause them to go into having a seizure? So a seizure is when your brain fires abnormally, so the electrical activity in your brain goes awry. Um, and what happens is there are certain kinds of seizures called photo-induced seizures or light-induced seizures. And when you have a lot of flashing lights going at a certain frequency, certain people, not everyone, thank God, but certain persons who have a susceptibility to abnormal brain firing, a certain susceptibility for seizures, they will then have a provoked seizure from that. So if your child has never had a seizure, mm -hmm. they have no history of it whatsoever in their health record, mm -hmm. can they for the first time watch a movie or a video game and just out of nowhere have a seizure? It's highly unlikely. It's very, very rare, but it could still happen. Yeah, okay. because it's about a frequency, and it doesn't even have to be a video game, although that's where we're mostly exposed to those kinds of frequencies of light change now. It could be even just the way light reflects as you're driving through a bridge. So you have a certain frequency of light versus darkness versus light versus darkness that can trigger a seizure. But it's very rare, and that's probably reassuring for you to know as a mother, that it will be triggered in someone without a history of seizures. So if, you, if your child does have a history of having seizures, then you may want to watch the type of movie they're seeing or the type of video game they may be playing? There are, yeah, certain cautions should be exercised. And so I think the, the movie makers and the video game industry is aware of that. Okay. Um, so they, they often will post those warnings. So what happens if one does have a seizure? Like what could a parent or a caretaker out there or even a teacher look for if someone were having a seizure? So a seizure can be um, where somebody even blacks out. So they're there but not really there, which a lot of kids when they daydream look a lot like they're having a seizure, but that's not really it. Then there's the more classic form of seizures that most of us know about where they're shaking of the arms and the legs. And that's much more um, rare in, in children, um, particularly with this kind of um, light-induced seizures. So what could you recommend to all of us out there to pay attention, any type of warning sign or? Well, what I often tell um, patients and families is, first of all, if there's a seizure, be calm. And then you can call 911 and get people there, but don't shove anything down the child's mouth or anything like that. Make sure that the child is lying flat and facing to the side. And then the other important thing to remember is if you have a child who's failing at school, who looks like they really want to perform but they don't seem to perform, and they have multiple times over the course of the day where they just look like they're staring off, they smack their lips, you know, or um, lick, lick their lips. These are classic kind of uh, what are called automatisms that are present in these patients who have absence epilepsy or absence seizures and that's something you would have evaluated by a neurologist. Okay. The good news is almost all seizures are very short so they last under a minute or two at the very very most and very rarely will a seizure last past a minute. Another thing, you know, our children today, again, so much technology, which I'm not against technology by any means. What happens when a boy picks up certain sexual images, and what happens when a girl picks up the same images? What's, what's the difference? How do we respond? So that, that's a good question. Boys and girls, and men and women, have fundamentally different responses, in my opinion. Boys tend to process it more visually, and girls and women tend to, for the most part, there are always exceptions, process it more within an emotional context. 
the important thing to realize is regardless of how many parental constraints you put on access to the internet, our children really have tremendous access. What I counsel parents and what we do at the National Council for Women's Health where we do sex education and discuss how to uh, talk about sex with children is really to make kids aware at an early age. If you're an adult and you don't want to have the conversation with your child, rest assured that someone else is going to be having that conversation with your child and maybe presenting matter in not quite the way you'd like to present it. So, talk to your kids. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Erica Reed with EricaReedLovesKids.com. Remember, we're all moms striving to do better.